Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. On behalf of UTM Library, I would like to thank everyone for participating in our very first workshop for editor, How to Get Your Journal Index in Scopus. For your information, this workshop is a three-way collaboration between UTM Library, Health and Wellness Research Alliance, and Elsevier. For your information, um, this workshop is organized as exclusively for UTM Journal Editors to better understand the secrets and tips in increasing publishing standards in order to obtain international exposure and awareness. Uh, a very good afternoon to all ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much uh, to UTM for having us over here. I'm Nicholas, the Solutions Consultant um, from Elsevier for the Southeast Asia region and I handle core content which primarily is related to Science Direct and Scopus. And today I'll be talking to you about how you can actually use Scopus as an editor uh, workflow tool. So essentially what I'll be talking about today is that I'll be um, reintroducing Scopus to you, not that I believe that you need any introduction to this. I'll talk to you what content there is in Scopus, uh, what are the key features for editors. I'll talk about the source browser and journal analyzer as well as research excellence over at UTM, as well as Scopus help and resources that you can leverage on to actually um, use it in your research um, workflow. So first of all, introduction. So as you are all aware, Scopus itself is the world's largest abstract and citation database for peer-reviewed scientific literature. It's the core data source of the Elsevier Research Intelligence Solutions, and it's used by academics, government researchers and corporate R&D professionals who need a comprehensive and efficient place to search, discover and to analyze research. We have up to 22,000 titles for more than 5,000 international publishers from 105 different countries. We have approximately 61 to 62 million records, 24 million patents from 5 patent offices worldwide and all content is vigorously vetted by an independent 15 person international board of experts called the Content Selection and Advisory Board, also known as the CSAB. We'll be talking about the CSAB multiple times. Derek himself will be talking about this subsequently during his sessions, as well as the criteria, where, um, which is a prerequisite for people to actually have their journals to be indexed within Scopus itself. And we cover more than 3,000 customers worldwide in all geographic regions. So, more than 3,500 organizations, including more than 150 research organizations itself, rely on Scopus data. So it's not just only QS, QS and THE, which are university ranking organizations. We have um, other organizations such as uh, Financial Times, McLean's. We're all using Scopus data in actually understanding and finding out the metrics to what makes a journal um, relevant and pertinent and important. So as mentioned previously, Scopus is actually, we also be on our hand, on our side, we're not planning to rest on our laurels. We actually plan to actually constantly expand and build on to um, Scopus itself. So there's an ongoing Scopus expansion program at which you do not have to provide, um, bear any additional costs. For, for instance, um, the pre-96 site that references expansion program goes back to the 1970s and provisioning up to, up to 8 million more articles. The conference expansion program represents 1,000 new titles for 6,000 events for additional 400,000 papers for up to 5 million references. The books expansion program um, adds on to about 122,000 books back to 2005 where we're looking to add at least 2,000 book titles every single year. So this just means that we're planning to actually add on so that, for instance, researchers would have a much better a much more holistic and representative niche index, for instance, because when you expand your um, reference program to up to 1996, we're not just marginalizing researchers who have been in the field for a long time. Now, these researchers who have been publishing and writing since the 1970s to the 1996, they're now better able to have their records, their niche index and articles better represented on Scopus itself. So it doesn't mean that body of work from 96 onwards. It now means that their body of work is from 1970 onwards and it's better encapsulated and it shows that how much of an effective researcher they are. 
So over to Scopus Help and Resources, what you can take a look at is you can stay up to date with the latest um, information and updates on Scopus blog and Twitter. So right now, uh, as of the moment, actually, uh, we tend to actually want to actually consistently update Scopus itself. So not only just by the expansion program itself, we are also looking to expand upon on the search functionality and the document data. So as of the moment, actually, um, over on the Scopus product development team, we are actually doing A-B testing on search functionality to generate a much more accurate reflection of the data which we are collecting and representing. So right now we're doing A-B testing and whenever we have product updates, we actually update you on the Scopus blog. So you are actually kept up to date and you will know what's the latest advances on the information and product developments within Scopus itself. There's also Scopus Twitter, so as a result you're able to follow and keep track on the information as well. We also have live chat help and tutorials for you to want to leverage on the information within Scopus itself. So if you need help with regards to your search functionality and queries, you can definitely use um, the function here. You can use the live chat function and one of the assistants on the support, support on the Scopus support desk would be more than happy to assist you on. So the LCB Journal Finder is something which um, I'm very keen to share with all of you. It's actually a free resource that allows researchers to find journals that can be best suited to help you publish your scientific um, article. This is um, powered by the Elsevier fingerprint engine, so you can go to journalfinder.elsevier.com and it's very straightforward because all you have to do is key in your article, your, um, your article title and your article abstract. And through the fingerprint engine, it basically uses a smart search technology um, and few of research specific vocabularies and nomenclatures to match your article to the Elsevier journals. So um, this allows you to match your article by searching via metadata and it comes up with a list of journals which it will um, highlight and perhaps postulate that this might be journal um, journals which you might want to actually have your article to be published in. So it's by no means definitive. If you want to actually, what I highly recommend is that you use this information here and you cross-reference it over with the information that you have from the Scopus Journal Analyzer tool. You can compare it across the various metrics which are highlighted and you can understand if this is actually a good use for you. There's also the Elsevier Publishing Campus, which is an online platform which offers free lectures, um, interactive training and professional advice to support researchers to publish um, a journal article, book or to develop a successful career as a professional researcher. So think of this as Coursera, but essentially, but more of it for the research side. So you're able to undergo specific, um, specific courses for you to actually write better, for you to actually learn how to publish better. So these are all tools which you can utilize and leverage on for yourself to basically understand and to write better and to be a better researcher. So essentially I've reached a very short end um, of this um, presentation, highlighting on how you can use um, Scopus to basically develop it and to help your editor workflow. So do feel free to let me know of any questions and I'll be, to, uh, I'll be more than happy to do my best to answer them. Thank you. So okay, um, I think that's a very good question with regard to the H index. And first of all, I apologize if I actually went too fast. It's a bad habit of mine. I'll try my best to correct it subsequently. Uh, okay, so with regard to the H index, that's actually a very good question. Um, the H index essentially is a, is a mean for to represent how many citations an author has get has obtained throughout his whole um, publishing career, for instance, right? So you don't we don't just want to look for the most published. Um, the most cited articles in which he has been presenting for because that might skew the entire mean because having one good article where everyone cites might not necessarily make you a very good researcher. It just shows that you have one good article. So what the H-Index represents is how productive are you as an author throughout the rest, throughout the, your entire um, career as a researcher or as a writer. So you want the, the whole traction is to represent um, the mean body of work you have published, the mean of that, which is correspondent to the number of citations you have obtained. So this actually reflects, by no means, this is by no means authoritative. It's, um, we think it's much more accurate than just using, say, something like impact factor, right, which is citations per documents published. Because, but it doesn't work that way because impact factor was developed to actually represent journals. It doesn't represent human beings. So we tried to change this by using the H-index to reflect the overall quality of work produced by a researcher. 
Um, over here, over in uh, Scopus, what we do do is that we get a whole body of work from 1970s. We track all the article records. We try to accrue all the body of works that have been indexed within Scopus, the citations within Scopus. And it's actually a very straightforward formula. We look at the mean for which the number of articles published together with the mean of the citations. So this one is very clear cut, it's very transparent, it's very simple to see it on Scopus itself. I'm not sure which other people actually, or who else actually uses the H-index the same way we do, but um, the way that Scopus does is we make it a very transparent, open process so everyone can understand it and they can see it. So hopefully I, that has been made a bit slightly, slightly clearer.